It's November 2023, and for the past two years around this time, I have purchased every cheap LED projector on Amazon to help you wade through all of the dishonest marketing and confusing specs and help you get the best value budget projector. I've got a brand new batch for 2023 that I bought using my own money, and I'm going to test their brightness, contrast, fan noise, input lag, power draw, and overall image quality. And as always, there are no sponsored reviews on this channel. But before we get into testing, I'm going to start this video by telling you all the reasons that you might not want to buy one of these projectors. First, the biggest complaint that I see in my comment section is about their focus. Good focus is the result of high quality lenses, and you can imagine that when you sell a projector for $50 to $100, there is not a lot of budget left over for optics. And unlike more expensive projectors that can deal with less than ideal placement, these budget LED projectors need to be positioned in the exact center of where you want your screen, and if not, the focus is not going to be great. Second, some of these projectors are loud. They work by shining an extremely bright, focused LED array through what is essentially a cell phone LCD screen. And if that display gets too hot, then it's going to melt and the picture will never be the same. So to prevent that, they use powerful fans to blow as much air as possible onto the screen, which ends up being really loud, especially if you're buying the cheapest fans possible to save on cost. And third, even though this batch of 2023 projectors is about three times brighter than the ones from 2021, they're still roughly 10% as bright as a typical home theater projector. So turning off the lights and shutting the blinds is a must, and they're going to have zero chance of working outside in your backyard until the sun is completely set. The great news is that if those three things aren't deal breakers for you, then some of these projectors are pretty amazing for the price, and a couple of them have absolutely no business being as good as they are. The first thing that I always test is their brightness, and I measured each projector using the ANSI Lumen standard, where you take individual brightness readings from nine sections of a pure white image, then you average those measurements and multiply by the screen size in square meters. The best brightness in this new batch of projectors comes from the Vanvo with 383 ANSI Lumens, which is the most I've ever measured from a sub $100 projector. Second was the Zoibu with 334 ANSI lumens, and third was last year's overall pick, the Haprun, with 243 ANSI lumens. Testing this way also lets us calculate the brightness uniformity, which can be an issue with these LED projectors, where the center of the image is very bright, but the corners are significantly dimmer. In this case, the best brightness uniformity came from last year's overall winner, the Haprun, with 73% uniformity. Second was the much dimmer WeWatch. And third was actually the Vanvo, which remember was the brightest projector, so that's pretty impressive. And the last test that I do with my Lux meter is for contrast, where I project an all black screen and then I measure the black floor, which is important for watching a projector in a dark room because higher black floors will have a more gray than black look and will also lead to significantly worse contrast. The lowest black floors came from the top tro with 0.14 lumens, the TMY with 0.17 lumens, and third was the WeWatch also with 0.17 lumens. And then if you divide the maximum brightness by the black floor, that gives you the contrast ratio, which is usually a good indicator of perceived picture quality. And the top contrast ratios were from the top tro at 1201 to 1, the Zoibu at 1017 to 1, and third was the E-Gate at 980 to 1. Along with brightness and contrast, resolution is also extremely important for overall picture quality. And unlike previous years when I've had a mix of 480p, 720p, and 1080p native resolutions, all of the projectors in this 2023 video are 1080p native, or at least claim to be on their Amazon listings. But we don't need to just guess which projector is going to have the best image. The best way to find out for sure is to do side-by-side -side comparisons. For this test, I used two 100-inch 1.1 gain white screens in my completely light-controlled garage, and I recorded both projectors at the same time and used the same settings in every round on my Sony a7 IV camera in manual mode. And the order of the rounds was based on how much I paid for each projector after coupons and discounts. And and that made round one the $55 Yasumepe on the right and the $58 Muka on the left. And even though these two projectors had similar brightness and contrast based on measurements alone, in my side-by-side -side testing, the Muka was clearly better in brightness, color, and contrast. So in round two, it was the Muka again on the left and then the $59 Hapron on the right, which was the overall winner of last year's video. And this was a lot closer than the last round and certain scenes definitely favored the Muka. But I did start to notice that the Muka had some refresh rate issues that led to screen tearing, which was a total deal breaker for me, especially with the Hapron's image quality being basically equal. And that made round three the Hapron on the right versus the $59 Pericat on the left. And this was no contest with the Pericat having less than half the brightness of the Hapron. So on to round four, where the 
the half round on the right goes up against the $59 Hawu on the left. And this was the closest round yet. But I noticed that the Hawu crushed a lot of shadow detail, and even though the Hawu had a slightly higher overall contrast ratio, I still like the image better on the half run. In round five, the half run was on the right, and the $60 home pow was on the left. And the biggest issue with the home pow was the lens, and no matter what I did, I could not get the whole screen in focus. So even though the home pow's color and brightness were pretty good, the hap run's much better focus earned it another win. Round six was the hap run on the right, and then the $64 Groveview T6 on the left, and this was the closest round so far. Judging purely on the Dolby Atmos test, I preferred the hap run in about half the scenes and the Groveview in the other half. So as a tiebreaker, I played Gemini Man to judge color accuracy and shadow detail, and the hap run was the clear winner. Because while the Groveview did produce a very watchable image, it wasn't all that close to what the video was supposed to look like, and the colors were too cool and a little bit undersaturated. So round seven is the hap run on the right and the $69 Pershy on the left. And again, both projectors performed pretty similarly. However, I thought the Pershy crushed a little bit of shadow detail and was dimmer overall. However, I still sent this one into the Gemini Man tiebreaker, and again, the hap run just did an overall fantastic job with color, while the shadows on the Pershy were a bit too harsh and the skin tones were too pale compared to the reference video. Round 8 then put the hap run on the right up against the $69 we watch on the left. And no tiebreaker was needed in this round, with the hap run being twice as bright with much better color saturation and accuracy. So then round 9 was the hap run on the right versus the $70 Vanvo on the left. And this is the first round where the hap run has gone up against a brighter projector, with the Vanvo having over 100 more lumens, and aside from being slightly oversaturated, I thought the Vanvo was superior in just about every way. It had better contrast, better color, and better brightness. So this was an easy pick, and after 8 rounds of domination, the hap run finally got taken down. At this point, I'm going to speed through a few rounds because the Vanvo absolutely outclassed the $79 TMY in round 10, it embarrassed the $79 DB Power in round 11, and in round 12, the $88 Toptro's high contrast wasn't nearly enough to compete with the Vanvo's brightness. Round 13, though, was a little bit closer with the Vanvo on the left and the $89 E-Gate on the right. And while the E-Gate's brightness was actually lower than the hap runs, it had a significantly lower black floor, leading to a better contrast ratio. And I thought the overall color and tone mapping was very good during the Dolby Atmos video. I also thought it did a really decent job during the Gemini Man tiebreaker, but the color on the Vanvo was much more true to the source, and the extra brightness really helped to pull out the highlights, so I ultimately chose the Vanvo again. Round 14 had the Vanvo on the left and then the $99 Yowick on the right. And I really wish I could get my money back for the Yowick, which had terrible brightness, terrible contrast, and wasn't even close to competing with the Vanvo. So then the final round of the sub $100 projectors was the Vanvo on the left and the $99 Zoibu on the right. And the Zoibu is quite a bit more advanced than the rest of the projectors in this video. Not only does it have motorized focus and digital keystone, but it also has very respectable brightness with good contrast. And judging strictly by the Dolby Atmos test video, the Zoibu was the clear winner. But switching over to Gemini Man revealed some serious issues with the contrast on the Zoibu being set way too high and the brightness being set too low. And unfortunately, the Zoibu's custom picture settings don't work at all, and changing the brightness, contrast, and color saturation has no effect on the resulting image. Which is honestly such a shame because otherwise the Zoibu would have been awesome. So judging strictly on picture quality, the best projector under $100 is the Vanvo, but there's still a lot more to consider. As I mentioned, these projectors tend to be pretty loud, so I measured the fan noise from 12 inches behind each projector and found that the quietest projectors were the DB Power and Toptro at around 43 decibels, and then the Hap Run at 44 decibels. The Vanvo also performed pretty well with a louder but lower pitched fan noise at 46 decibels, while the high performing Zoibu was much louder at 50 decibels, which is right on the edge of what I would consider to be acceptable, but you definitely won't be able to ignore it in a quiet room. I also measured the input lag for gaming, which is the time in between when you press a button and when you see that action on the screen, and I found that most of the projectors without digital keystone were the exact same at around 20 to 22 milliseconds of input lag, which is very good for gaming, while the DB Power, Toptro, Zoibu, and Yesetmpup were double or triple that amount. And the last test that I did was for people who use these projectors for Halloween or Christmas projection decorations, which are ideally played off of a USB thumb drive. But the issue is that most of these projectors display the file name and other icons when each video is played. And out of all the projectors, only the HomePow, Mooka, Yowick, and Vanvo didn't show file names in between clips. 
So all things considered, which inexpensive projector should you buy? Overall, I don't think that my recommendation has changed much since last year, and the Hapron H1 is the best value for the price when you consider the total package of brightness, color, fan noise, input lag, focus, and speaker quality. Julio, good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally, a spy in the first order. A spy. The price fluctuates between about $50 and $80 depending on sales, and at that price there is not a better projector for the money. The Vanvo also performed really well, and it had better brightness, contrast, and color than the Hapron, and the sound quality was also better. Julio, good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally, a spy in the first order. A spy. However, the biggest issue with the Vanvo is that while I picked it up for $70, that was using a $60 off coupon, which appears to be gone now. And while I think the Vanvo was easily worth $10 to $20 more than the Hapron, I do not think it's worth $50 to $80 more, especially with its louder fan and overall larger size. Similarly, the Zoibu was $199 with a 50% off coupon, and at $99 it's got some advanced features that you generally don't find on other projectors under $100 like motorized focus and digital horizontal and vertical keystone, making it the only projector in this video that can be offset to the side of the screen and still produce an acceptable image. I also thought that the Zoibu's built-in speakers were better than any of the other projectors in this video. Julio, good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally, a spy in the first order. A spy. But keep in mind that the Zoibu's custom image settings don't work and the input lag is not acceptable for gaming. So those are two big strikes against it. And the other big problem with spending $99 on a projector is that at that point you are very close to being able to buy the Groveview JQ818C, which is usually between $120 and $150, and it is so much better than the rest of these projectors. Adding the JQ818C to the charts, you can see it would be the brightest by over 100 lumens, it has nearly double the contrast ratio of the next closest projector, and it has great color saturation. And putting the Groveview 818C up against the top performing Vanvo makes the Vanvo look like a toy. And honestly, the Groveview JQ818C has no business being as good as it is for the price. So unless the Zoibu fixes its custom picture settings, or the Vanvo goes back on sale, then my final recommendations are the Hapron H1 for $65 or less, and above $65, you should probably save up for the Groveview, and those happen to be my exact same recommendations from 2022. Which I guess is good for everyone who already bought those, but it's bad because it means we didn't see the same huge jump in performance and value this year as in the year before. As a reminder, there are no sponsored reviews on this channel, but I do have links down in the description for all the projectors in this video, and as always I appreciate when you use those links, since as an Amazon affiliate I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. I'd also like to thank all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for their continued support of my channel, and if you're interested in supporting my channel and you want to get in on my monthly giveaways, check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.